YouTube, it's your boy Raymond Chaco Forever. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm about another video. Before I get into that video, I want to remind everyone that I'm on the road to achieving 10,000 subscribers. I'm 3,000 subscribers away. I'm 3,000 subscribers away. So if you like my channel and find my content useful, take a moment to subscribe and turn on post bed notifications. That way YouTube will notify you every time I upload a video. I'm also on the road to achieving 3 million views before 2024 end. I'm a little under 300,000 views away from 3 million views on YouTube. So I do lead a playlist to a different playlist in every description box. Take a moment to click on those links, run the views up, run the thumbs up up, run the comments up. And if you feel the need to share the playlist, feel free to share the playlist. Today I'm about to run a video. Today I'm about with a Q&A video. A Q&A video. My very, very first Q&A video. Thanks to a solid supporter slash spammer. Yes, I say solid supporter slash spammer. Because everyone that has a letter for their profile picture on YouTube, I assume they're either a spammer or a solid supporter. And this person, I haven't seen him on my channel, on my live stream that I do Monday to Friday since... I agree to do a Q and A video. So this is my first time doing a Q and A video, and most importantly, this is my first time taking a video suggestion from a solid supporter slash spammer. And before I get into this Q and A video, I want to give a shout out to two people. The link to their channel will be in the description box. One Slim Shell, she's been a loyal supporter of my channel for a long time. I tell when I say a long time, I tell her for the time when I was struggling, when I was barely getting by, and then here it is, I made move and came up, and she's still around. Also, your pleasure. She's another one that been around for a long time on my YouTube channel, and the lead to her channel will be in the description. But I also love Marlene four one one. Also. I want to give a shout out to them because without them three, as you can see, without them three, this video will, will still be on hold. Because as you can see, I will be doing a Q&A video next month once I get 25 to 50 questions. If you take away Slim Share questions and your pleasure questions, I want to have one question answered. So, you know, that's why I'm giving them two a shout out. Slim Share and your pleasure. Go check out that YouTube channel. Click on the link in my description box. Check out that YouTube channel. Run their views up. And let them know your boy, Raymond Tackle Forever, sent you. Also, thank you, Slim Shell, and your pleasure, 721. Thank you for giving me enough questions and answering the Q&A video. I didn't find it weird that that people re make a video request and they don't, don't come support that video or don't help promote that video. But thanks to my loyal supporters, the video, the, the questions are in. And I'm answering the questions on the screen. I want to do it this way because this way it will be easy for me to keep up with. Question number one for Slim Shell. What is your number one pet peeve? My number one pet peeve is uh, treat everybody how you want to be treated. Treat everybody how you want to be treated until you acknowledge they not treat you how you treat them, then you have every right to cut them off. You know what I mean? That's one of my biggest pet peeves that I've been living up to since 98, since I was 18 years old. 
That's one of the main reasons I don't have a lot of friends because when I see that you can't treat me how I treat you, I just cut you off. It's just simple. Not gonna be me treat you how I wanna be treated. You treat me how, how you decide to treat me. No, we're not doing that in, in Raymond Tiger Forever Life. Question number two for Slim Shell. Your favorite color. My favorite color is blue. Any kind of blue is my favorite color. Next question from Slim Shell. What are some of your go to foods? My go to food, it used to be chips. It used to be chips, but I just want something much on. But now I gave up this, I replaced the chips with fresh watermelon from Walmart or Wawa. You know what I mean? I like I love my watermelon. I love my watermelon. That's my go to food. Watermelon, any kind of fruit, or any kind of ice cream that I like. Cooking cream ice cream. Next question from Slim Shell, any weird habits? A weird habit of mine, I would say, when I buy soul food or when I eat a, a whole cooked meal, and let's say the size of something like Yale's, mac and cheese, and baked beans, I like to mix all that together, eat the meat, mix all the sides together, the Yale's, the mac and cheese, the baked beans, and the cornbread, mix all that together, and then eat that later. Another weird habit of mine would be, What's another weird habit I got? Another weird habit that Raymond Tucker forever have is... I thought that's the only weird habit that I really have. Yeah, that's about the only weird habit that I really have. That I think is weird, but... And people say it's weird also. Next question from Sim Shell. Are you a goal setter? Yes, I am. I set goals. I start planning out my goals from August... For the middle of the year, it's a new year for the following year. And I go over those goals every month. The beginning of each month, I go to my goal list and see and see and remind myself of my goals and then I execute those goals. Describe yourself in one word. I would say describe myself in one word would be, would be spectacular. I consider myself to be a very spectacular individual. After all I've been through, from birth to the very morning moment adoption. I've been locked up county kind of jail. I've been in prison. Being a father. Uh all the all the wrong choices I made, all the good choices I made. And yet, here I stand, 44 years old, no drug addiction, no alcohol addiction, still have a stable mind and still focus on doing what's right. I don't know a lot of people that's been to hell and back and cope with it all, deal with it all on a daily basis without being high, without being drunk. So that's why I call myself Spectacular. That's why my name says Raymond Tackler Forever for my YouTube channel because I consider myself to be a, a very spectacular individual. What makes you happy the most? Me, to be honest, what made, what made me happy the most is winning. I'm a two-time fella thanks to Florida, and I'm still out here winning. I'm still proving society wrong. All that they say a convicted fella can't do in life, I proved a lot of that wrong. That's what made me happy. That's what made me happy the most, winning. Proving society wrong. Proving society wrong is what made me happy. What is one of my biggest fears? Uh, what is one of my biggest fears? Uh, I guess dying without winning the marathon. Dying before I meet the marathon, before I finish the marathon. Dying before I complete everything that I that I'm about to complete. That would be, that's my biggest fear. That's my biggest fear, you know. Dying before I complete the marathon. You know, we all moving on bar time. We all don't know when we're going to die. What minute, what second, what hour, what day, what week, what month, what year. So, yeah, that's my biggest fear. Dying without completing the marathon. The, the goal is to gain success. Gain success. And I, I want to complete that. Before I die. 
Question for Love Marlene 4111. Y'all make sure y'all go check her channel as well. She asked, if you could go back in time and change a decision you made, what would it be? Decision I would change is, is that the two decisions I made that I would change, but what both of them I just spoke on? And the last time I asked this question, I said the first one. So this, I'm, this time, I'm going to say the second one is becoming a convicted felon. Becoming a convicted felon. That's the only decision in the past that I made that I would I would change. Becoming a convicted felon. It caused a lot of problems in my life. But as the years went by, it made me a better person. made me a better man. And it's to the point where it's not causing no problems in my life. Now, let's get to the... And list a question from your pleasure. And she asked, shout out to your pleasure 721 as well. The link to her YouTube channel will be in the description. Box. And make sure, make sure you guys check her channel and let her know your boy Raymond Taco Forever sent you. Question number one, what social stigma does society need to get get over? Um I don't know. I don't know. Cause I don't I don't depends on who you follow, I don't consider no social media bad because if you you gotta be careful who you entertain, what you entertain. And I'm very cautious of what I entertain on a daily basis. So I, I can't I can't really say what social media stigma stemma we need to does society need to get over. I, I can't really say. I think if I had to choose one, it would have to be Twitter. It had to be Twitter. Cause I hear a lot going on on Twitter. So I would say Twitter, or my bad, um, Generation X, X is what it called nowadays. What food have you never eaten but would really like to try? I want to try some gator. I want to try some gator. I know a restaurant in Orlando, Florida that sell fried gator. Next time I go home and have this free time, I would try me some gator, some fried gator, fried alligator. What's something you really resent paying for? Bills. Just being real, bills. You know, um, Virginia have a bill called property tax. And when I bought my commercial box truck, when I bought my box truck, I want to imagine I bought my box truck in May. Here it is, May, June, July, August. Sometimes in September, I receive my property tax bill. Now, you have to own a vehicle a year in order to receive your property tax bill. I got my property tax bill for my for my box truck by commercial vehicle in four months. Yeah, that's the bill I resent paying, my property tax. Like, they don't give you the benefit of the doubt and wait a year till you own the vehicle a year to sell your property tax. They said it all kind of cycles. What are you currently worried about? Uh, my kids. My kids. I'm worried about my kids. That's what I'm worried about the most, my kids. I had one in college. I had one that her, have her own business. And I had my, my oldest son. And I see a lot of me and them. I know how it played out bad for me. So I'm worried about how it would play out for them. You know, I have a son in college. And every time I hear about a mass shooting, I'm praying my butt off it didn't happen at the college he goes to. I'm praying that it didn't happen in Florida. You know what I mean? That's one of my words. That's one of my words right now. That's something I'm worried about. You know, my daughter being a young business owner, that's something I'm worried about. Fresh out of high school, not even out of high school yet, and already a business owner. Don't graduate to this, to 2025, and she ought to have her own business. Like, yo, it's, it's it worry, it, I'm worried about that, you know. My other son still finding his way. I'm worried about that. I'm worried about that. I'm, I'm pretty much worried about that. Not going to go into detail, but I'm worried about that. 
where are some unusual places you've been? Unusual? I, I don't think I've been anywhere unusual. I don't think I would. I, I, I can't say I've been somewhere in a, my 44 years of been in the earth that wasn't usual. That's just unusual. I don't. I can't name it well. What are some red flags to watch for? Watch out for in daily life. Red flags. People that ain't going nowhere. Like people that 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 you know for years still stuck at the same standstill. That's a red flag for me right now. That's a red flag for me not to take no advice from you. If you on social media. And you have all the answers for everybody's problems in life but your own. You still repeat the same cycle over and over and over. You know, those are red flags for me to stay away from you. Not to conversate with you, not to take your advice. You have all the answers for people in their life, but don't have no answers for the for the problems and things that you go through. That's a red flag for me not to take heed to no advice from you. What's something that will always be in, a, be in fashion no matter how much time passes? Um, Jordans. Jordan tennis shoes. That's something that always be in fashion no matter how much time go by. No matter how many new logos they add to a, to the Jordan shoes. That's something that will always be in style. Always be in fashion. What actors or actresses play the same character in almost every movie or show they do? That's a good question. I don't really know. I can't really answer that because I don't watch a lot of TV. I mean, if not on Netflix, I haven't really seen any, any TV shows or movies where an actor or actress is playing the same character in almost every movie or show. I haven't, I haven't seen many TV shows or movies like that, so I can't really, I can't really answer that one. What's the what's the best slash worst practical joke that you played on someone or that was played on you? The best practical joke I played on someone. My manager, my dis my manager at People Ready. The year that I went to bite weed. I played a practical joke on her. That was the worst practical joke that I ever played on somebody. Is um, I was at black. I was at bite wheat, black bite wheat, murder beach with my brother, and it's just I was looking for. I'm trying to play practical jokes on people. The house, the house, and the vacation rental we rented. Nobody was down with it. Like, nah, we ain't with it. We ain't with it. Okay, cool. So I came with the idea to play a practical joke on my manager, and I text her phone saying. Hey, this is Raymond brother texting to let you know that he he died on a motorcycle crash. Trying to do a stunt on a motorcycle. It went wrong and he died. You know what I mean? And so as I hear said, I'ma say within five minutes, that's the fastest she ever called my phone back to back, back to back. And the whole time I'm texting her, explaining things and whatnot. I'm texting back and forth for her from my phone, saying that I'm my brother. You know what I mean? Saying that I'm my brother. And it led to a good 30 minute back and forth. She's standing trying to call, and I'm telling her, I'm right here with the police, it's sweating everything going up. We, we still try to re get everything since when it resolved. You know? And then I'm going to say, four hours later, I finally texted her like, nah, this is just a joke. And look here, she FaceTimed me so fast, raising hell, face gunshot red full of tears. I mean, she was really devastated. That, uh, and actually thought that I died in the most like a crash for real. So that was a that was the worst practical joke I played on somebody and, and never did a joke ever since. That's why I don't get into praise. Because something that you might think is funny, the next person might not find it so funny. Who do you go out? Who do you go out your way to be nice to? My mom and my kids. 
my mom and my kids. Other than them, I don't see a need, I don't see a reason to go out my way to be nice to anybody. My mom and my children. Who was your craziest slash most interesting teacher? My craziest slash most interesting teacher. Huh. Huh. Crazy and most interesting teacher. I would say my brother. Because he got that crazy side. And then he had that side where he shared so much knowledge, wisdom, understanding. So I would say my brother. Yeah, he taught me a lot. These six years, these years I got to know him, bond with him. And in three years I've been here in Virginia, he's taught me a lot in these years since we've reunited. He's taught me a lot. A lot. More than anybody ever taught me in my 44 years of living. I would say my brother. Most definitely my brother. What old person thing what old person things do you do? What old person things do you do? Uh everything that the older men taught me as a child. I still do today because my favorite Bible verse says, teach a child their ways while they are young. They will not depart from when they old. So with that being said, all the older men I had the privilege to observe from kindergarten to right now in life, every man, every married man that I observed from kindergarten to right now in life, I noticed they don't have a bunch of friends. It's just them and their wife. That's the mindset I have. That's something I live up to. I don't have a lot of friends because I know once I get married, or if I decide to remarry, get married again, all my friends are going to fade away. You know, all the older men that, when I say older men, I'm talking about older men that's now in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s. Everything that they taught me or I observed from them from kindergarten to right now, I do. Like how they stick with one haircut for years. I sit with one haircut for years, forever. The way they dress. You know, you see a lot of older men that wear that baggy clothes. I wear my right sizes. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot going on all day. But I'm just going to share those two there. The old-fashioned way of life. The old-fashioned way of life. If you not, if you not in your 40s and up, you would understand what I mean by the old-fashioned way of life. You would understand by the old-fashioned way of the world. So I'm not going to go into detail, but think about your grandparents. Everything that your grandparents, your grandfather, your grandmother stood for before they left this earth, that's what I live up to. All of it. All of it. My, you know, all of it. Everything that your grandparents stood for. Everything that your uncles and aunties have been married from 18 and then they 60, now they in their 60s, 70s, 80s. Yes. Everything that they stood for is what I stand for. You know what I mean? Which celebrity do you think is the most down to earth? Huh. Which celebrity do I think is the most down to earth? I would say Kevin Gates. I would say Kevin Gates because I don't watch this man observe so much since he became famous. And I felt that same energy when I went to one of his concerts in Orlando, Florida. So I would say Kevin Gates. What's the most expensive thing I've broken? Huh. The most expensive thing I've broken in life. I would say my Honda. My Honda Accord. I had, I had a 08. I had a 08 Honda Accord that I paid 4500 for when I first moved to Virginia. Me totaling that car from texting and driving 
and ran into the job gate, rushed her back from break, trying to argue on the phone with someone, argue through text messages because that person wouldn't answer the phone. And I remember the gate was half open when we left for lunch, but I didn't remember that the gate was half open when I came back from going to get food. And when I crashed into it, that would have crossed my mind. The gate was half open on the way back from lunch, on the way to lunch. I told her my car. I mean, told her the whole car. That's how bad the front of the car was damaged. What makes you roll your eyes every time you hear it? What made me hold my roll my eyes every time I hear it? I mean, men are supposed to roll their eyes. That's something that females do, but something that 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 something that put me in a roll my eyes moment. People that do a lot of talk but can't back it up with actions. People that do a lot of talking but can't back it up with actions. You know. Yeah, people that do a lot of talking, like people, people do that talk, people talk the talk but can't walk the walk. That's what that would give me. That would put me one of those roll your eyes moment. What do you think you are much better at than you actually are? <laughs> what do you think you are much better at than you actually are? That's a good question. What do you think you are much better at? What do you think you are better at than you actually are? Uh, that's a good question. That's a good question that I don't have an answer for. What do you think you... What do you think you are much better at than you asked her? That's a good question that I don't have an answer for. Okay, so she put the same question twice, twice. Two questions she wrote twice. What are your most important rules when going on a date? That's a good question because I haven't been on a date in a while. What are your most important rules we're going on a date. Huh. Pay attention to details. Pay attention to details. Pay attention to detail. Media. Make sure she's showing interest in me. Make sure she's asking me questions just like I'm asking her questions. Make sure she's taking heed to what I'm saying like I'm taking heed to what she's saying. Yeah, those are those are my most important rules with dating. Make sure we both been attentive to one another. That we both been active for the date. She's partaking in the question, asking me questions. Not just gonna be me asking her a million one questions about her life or whatnot. She needs to be asking me a million one questions as well. Yeah. How do you judge a person? To be honest, I really don't. Because I don't want people judging me, so I don't judge others. You know what I mean? Like, real talk, I don't judge others because I don't want to be judged. My life not perfect to judge anyone, so I don't judge others. If someone narrated your life, who would you want to be the narrator? The that question has been asked a lot of times, a lot of tab, a lot of Q&A videos. And it has. And I still choose the same person. If someone narrated your life, who would you want to be the narrator? The last time I asked this question, I said, I said either Denzel, Cuba Gooding Jr. or Samuel Jackson. Now, I would say, now today I would say one of my sons. One of my sons. Get somebody that start. I would want to help somebody become more famous. I would help. I would want to help someone up and coming become famous. You know, 
if I had if I had to choose a celebrity, I would choose. I'm not gonna say him. I would say I don't know. I don't know many up and coming celebrities that I would want to see narrate my life. But I would want to say I would I want that role to be with somebody that was that been around me for years. One of my sons. One of my sons. You know. I want somebody like that. One of my sons to play that role. What was the most unsettling film you see? The most unsettling film. Huh, that's a good question. What was the most unsettling film you see? I think I would say The Deliverance. The Deliverance. On Netflix. I'm about to say, cause that movie there, yeah, that was very unsettling for me. That was very, very unsettling for me to see right there. And that completes the, how many questions were? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Almost 30 questions. Because it's two of them that was in here twice. So I would say 31, but it's two of them that was written twice. I got to say, there was, some, there was some very interesting questions for a Q&A video. Thank y'all for taking the time to come up with 31 questions for me to answer for a Q&A video for a shout out my shout out video the last Sunday in October tell me how you think I did how, what are your thoughts on this Q&A video also for a shout out take the time to go comment go watch and leave a comment on a video on all these people channel Slim Shell let them know your boy Raymond Tackle Family sent you love my lead 411 your pleasure, 721. Because that did come with most of the questions. It did come with most of the questions, as you can see. As you can see. It did come up with most of the questions. You know, it's crazy that a, a solid supporter slash spammer would come with a video idea and then don't partake. Because as you can see, as you can see, you don't see no questions up here from a from a spammer. From a spammer or, or a solid supporter. You know, it is what it is. Thanks for the shout out. Thanks for the video idea. Um, I'm on a road to reaching 3 million views before 2024 ends. I'm 300,000, I'm less than 300,000 views away. I had a good content. You guys are the supporter. Click on the playlist, run the views up, run the thumbs up up, run the comments up. And if you feel the need to share the playlist, feel free to share the playlist. I'm also on a road to achieving 10,000 subscribers. I'm on a road to reaching 10,000 subscribers. I'm another 3,000 subscribers away from 10,000 subscribers. If you haven't took a moment to subscribe to my YouTube channel, now is the time to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Smash that subscribe button and most importantly, smash that bell. That way YouTube will notify you every time I upload a new video.